Believe it or not, we are one day away at long last from the presidential election. The final NBC Wall Street Journal national poll shows Hillary Clinton holding on to a small lead over Donald Trump, 44 to 40. Joining me right now to weigh in on those results and talk about what we can expect tomorrow, 11 Alive political analyst LaDawn Jones and Charlie Harper. Let's talk about polls. We are inundated with polls, left, right, center. They are all over the place. But truth be told, a couple of years ago, I was sent to cover Jack Kingston, who was a huge leader, mm -hmm. at least in three or four different polls. And he was defeated within about 10 minutes once they closed uh, as Senator Perdue uh, uh, was victorious. Could that happen tomorrow night? Could we see that again? Absolutely. I think ha that what has been repeated this entire election is that this is unpredictable, particularly with uh, Comey's new announcement. I think that it has uh, heightened people by announcing that Hillary is so much in the lead. I think it's going to push out more of Trump supporters, meaning that we cannot rely solely on the polls. You agree with that, Charlie? Even when you do look at the polls, you've got real, real, real clear politics that is an aggregator of polls. So they show poll of polls. They're showing 171 electoral votes as toss-ups. So when you, even when they break those down into assigning them to categories, they only have to be wrong about Florida and New Hampshire right now on their map. And Donald Trump's won this. I would have never thought it would have been saying that six months ago. You know, the analogy from more than 30 years ago with Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan, Reagan, where Carter was way out in front, according to most polls that we saw. And, of course, that's not how it played out in 1980. What we've got to look at is the margin of error on polls, usually on most of these, are 3 to 4 percent. And it if all of the polls break one way or the other, realistically, uh, you could look at Larry Sabato, who thinks Hillary Clinton will have 350 electoral votes, and people will right. say it wasn't that close. When you get this close and you have this many states that are in that margin of error, that's where it really just becomes unpredictable. The path still is very much narrower for Donald Trump. We're really talking about Florida, North Carolina, New Hampshire, and Nevada, really, I think, in my book, are the states that Donald Trump must win and some combination thereof, but definitely Florida and, and probably North Carolina. If he doesn't win those, it, it's going to be a tough uphill battle. Uh, could he add on others to that? Possibly. But if that's kind of those are the ones most in the balance of where we are to see where we go tomorrow. But on if Hillary Clinton does indeed win, I mean, governing for her becomes a Rubik's Cube. I mean, potentially looking at investigations, a lot of angry Republicans. Uh, many of these Republicans will see uh, the ability to compromise as a sign of weakness within their districts. I mean, it's an extraordinary kind of horizon she could be looking at within 48 hours if she were to win. Absolutely. But Hillary Clinton knew that she was going to be facing this when, before she even walked in. We've been talking about these same scandals, same problems, same investigations since the beginning of her campaign. What we expect to see is the same type of uh, stop movement that Congress has put on uh, President Obama. We know that any changes that she wants updates to the Affordable Care Act won't happen, right. and we'll really have to see what happens with the Supreme Court. How do you think all this plays as far as the Senate goes? Will the Democrats get the Senate? It is, again, uh, the, the predictions I'm seeing are 50-50, at which point the Vice President gets to break the tie in the Senate. Uh, as much as 52 Republicans, is, I've seen one prediction that Republicans are down 49-51. It really is kind of one of those going to be up late to figure out who has the Senate. But it, to, to kind of uh, counteract your point, I'll say this. These Senate elections also matter, and the House elections matter. And I think the entire campaign for Hillary Clinton that has been at least projected at me has been, you can't vote for Donald Trump. He's not acceptable. That's very different than saying, vote for Hillary Clinton and give her a mandate. And if the American people send back a Republican House and possibly a Republican Senate, I think what they're saying is, let's just hold off and let's have a little more gridlock. As much as it annoys all of us, gridlock might be the best way out of having the two most unpopular nominees ever to be put for the American people and having to choose. LaDonna, I've got seconds left. Do you concur? I concur. There are some races um, in Chicago and a few other places that are some real toss-ups for the Senate. Um, they have some uh, incumbents that have some real challengers, and the heightened sense of this election on uh, one end took away all the took all the air out the room from these candidates, right. but at the same time um, also has more people going to the polls that they may pull it out. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. We will see you tomorrow night. Tomorrow night it is. Should be fun. Should be interesting. <laughs> It should be long. Yes, right. long is going <laughs> to be the operative. Long is the operative word, that is for sure. Did he say gridlock, more gridlock uh, to come? Sadly, oh, yes. Well, all right.
In the race for the White House, we're just eight days away from the big election. And while Georgia is considered a swing state in this race, a new 11 Alive Survey USA poll shows Donald Trump is in position to win the state's 16 electoral votes. He has a seven-point lead over Hillary Clinton right now. Joining me are our political analysts, the Don Jones and Mike Hassinger. So are you surprised by this? I mean, are we a red state, which we've been for decades, or are we a purple state or a pink state? We've been a red state since the last Clinton election. Yes. And although a lot of the national polls who are saying that we may be one of those swing states, uh, the environment, the climate in Georgia was pretty clear. And, and I'm not surprised at the outcome of the result Mike. of the poll. The last time Georgia voted for a Democrat or actually awarded their electoral votes for a Democrat was Bill Clinton in yep. 1992. Mm -hmm. We are as red as states can get. Um, I think the 92 election even was a fluke. With, so with, so with, why does the Hillary Clinton campaign and the Democrats think that this state is in play? I don't think they really think that. I think they want Donald Trump's campaign to think that. Mm -hmm. For example, they've just uh, spent about $2 million in advertising in Augusta, Macon, Savannah, and a few extra small buy in Atlanta. But that was from their super PAC, not the Clinton campaign, and it represents about 1.3% of their total advertising budget. So, yeah. yes, there's a little bit of spending here, but it's mostly a head fit. Yeah, it's a mind game right now. All right, let's, let's talk about this past weekend and the big October surprise from the FBI. They're releasing information that it's going to look into Hillary Clinton-related emails. How will this impact the election? You know, it was not surprising that they came out. It's clear that this was going to get leaked one way or the other, and it looks like uh, the FBI director, Comey, really wanted to try to protect himself. It's unfortunate that Hillary and her campaign's response is, why would they do this right before, right in the middle of a campaign? It sounds a lot like the, this whole thing is rigged kind of response. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So you feel like James Comey was uh, between a rock and a hard place, like he had to say something. Uh, something to, you know, I don't have anything to support it, but something tells me that there had to be another the push behind this because the timing uh, when he came out he had heard the information about a week prior and he still decided to come forward with it and the way that he came forward as vague as he was instead of making it very clear there was not we don't know what's sure. in the emails yet right. yeah. and remember this was the, the director of the FBI was the man who not three weeks ago was being castigated by Republicans and praised by Democrats right, right, for right. being such a hero and letting Hillary Clinton off the hook I think this politically this couldn't be any worse for the Clinton will campaign. it change minds? Do you think that those who are undecided will, you know, change their mind or go for, for Donald Trump as opposed to Hillary Clinton? Or, and will it suppress the vote? Voters never change their minds, ever. They always stay with their initial belief. And Donald Trump said it would he could shoot a supporter on Fifth Avenue right, or right, whatever. Right. That's true. He would not lose any so support. So even though this appears to be quite devastating for the Clinton campaign, at least it was a bad weekend for her campaign, you don't think that it's going to change voters one way or the other. Whoever's made up their mind so far, it, that's how they're going to vote. But then what about those who are not happy with either candidate? Will it just keep people home? Absolutely. Yes. I think so. I think that is and that's the big part of change the strategy, here. Isn't exactly. It not? That was the big change here. This race has always been a, not been about undecided voters deciding between the two major candidates. It was deciding whether or not they were going to support mm -hmm. the candidate they would normally get behind. And I think that for those who did not early vote, uh, they are going to have some real heartburn about going to the polls and voting for Hillary. This just adds more fuel to the fire, even though it's really nothing at this yeah, point. Could, could Donald Trump win the election, given the information? That in, came out this weekend? Obviously in Georgia he will, but it looks like his electoral votes, he's going to have to pull a lot of other states that it, it, he does not have a high chance of winning in order to become president. Mike. American politics is nothing if not crazy and unpredictable. <laughs> so I, I will say, yes, there is a chance, uh, but I think it's very, very yeah. unlikely. Any impact down ballot? Very we quickly. haven't seen it in Georgia, no. Okay. Johnny Isaacson's actually rising and pulling ahead. Um, no matter what Trump does, he goes up. Isaacson goes up, he goes down, right. Isaacson still goes yeah, up. And which makes us circle right back to this is a red state. That's correct. That's <laughs> exactly. Correct. All right, Mike LaDon. Thank you. Jeff? Thanks. Can. Joining me to talk more about this, the impact of those statements and other statements made during the debate last night, uh, political analyst LaDon Jones and Mike Hassinger. Wow. You know, I, I think that just overshadowed everything else that happened during the debate last night. The first part of it, uh, Donald Trump looked, you know, very, very solid and you know, did a good performance. And then that, and that's what we're talking about. So how damaging was that statement? You can almost set your watch by when Donald Trump is going to start to implode in a presidential debate. It's about 30 to 35 minutes in. Um, there's really no question that it was damaging to his campaign. 
um, just by the sort of overwrought reaction to it. Um, it doesn't matter whether or not Donald Trump ever accepts the results of this election. Mm -hmm. Al Gore still thinks he won Florida. And there are people to this day who cannot bring themselves to say <laughs> that he, in fact, did not, that George W. Bush won Florida. Right, right. And yet the republic still stands. We are bigger and stronger and more powerful than Donald Trump, despite what he says. The only difference is, is that this campaign has been so just heated and, and it just really has divided our country in a big way. I think to extend it past November 8th with some kind of petulant uh, fit that Donald Trump is known to have, um, that he has exhibited in the past, may not be what we need after this. We need to come together. Well, there is an article in the Washington Post today that implied that this, uh, this statement really sort of, uh, you know, is insidious and in, in, in some regards, perhaps as code, uh, incites and engages his followers beyond election day. I agree. I agree completely. You know, last night he tried to complain that it was uh, Hillary Clinton that incited this violence. He's not taking responsibility for what he has done throughout this campaign. And so I think we're going to see this all the way up into the end. And we have no reason to think we will see anything else when it's over. When it comes to the damage, Mike, I mean, so down ticket and all of those other GOP candidates uh, across the country running to either stay in office or mostly running to stay in office. Mm -hmm. How does it affect them? Well, uh, we haven't seen a whole lot of incumbent Republicans being affected by this. Um, people are going back to their own district and shying away from a national election. I've got a local election here that I'm working on, and there is plenty of distance between the incumbent Republican and the presidential nominee. How about that? Yes. Well, they, this has pulled apart the Republican Party as well. And so I think that after this election and elections going forward, there are going to be some Republicans that have to really e reevaluate what their party is doing. And I think you're going to see a whole lot more of those people move to an independent voter. Well, let's talk about another comment. Nasty woman. <laughs> yes. Okay, we're also talking about that as well. Yesterday on this very program, I said that Donald Trump was going to have to speak to women. He did not need to insult them. He particularly did not need to insult Hillary Clinton, who was standing right there. Well, he said last night there was no one more respectful of women than he. He says and a then lot he of said, And then he <laughs> makes the comment, nasty woman. And so nasty woman, but then he also continued with the African Americans, the Latinos, and it, he has not even recognized the offensiveness of so much of his language, which is what makes him so unbelievable and makes the women who've come out against him so much more believable. Yeah, so did he expand his tent at all? Or is, at this point, is that even the strategy? for the Trump campaign. Uh, Donald Trump has at times successfully, at other times not so successfully, tried to reinvent the entire political campaign process. Um, he campaigned in a very non-traditional way during the primaries to great success. He won the nomination. Um, you know, there are people in my party who wish a real Republican had won the nomination. What was nomination. the strategy? What's the, I mean, did, was he Being, intent on trying to ex expand was, the, the, the tent he last He wanted night? to control the debate without actually participating in it. He wanted to be a larger-than-life character. He didn't have to master issues. He just said outrageous things that got media attention, that forced him up in the polls, and that made him actually look winnable. He is trying to reinvent the character and the, the, the nature of presidential debates, and he hasn't been able to do it. He's failed three times. But he's also making people just not want to go to the polls. He's making it so nasty and so uncomfortable. His voters are going to double down. Nothing he said last night even remotely bothered them, but they're going to still go to the polls. But he knows that there's a big portion of the electorate that just feels uncomfortable about this whole thing, staying away from the issues, keeping up the muck, helps him out. Very longer. quickly, let's talk about Hillary. There were many very good, pointed, hard questions pointed at Hillary Clinton. Is it fair to say that she didn't answer them or sidestep them? I agree completely. I think that Hillary Clinton missed some good opportunities to explain immigration. She missed some opportunities and she went for the bait to talk negatively about Trump. She misunderstood and misrepresented the Supreme Court decision on uh, Heller on the Second Amendment, but she was very effective at using that trigger word, mm -hmm. choked when uh, she was talking about Donald Trump's trip to Mexico, and you could literally see him tense yeah. and steam start to and come out of his ears. And there was bait hung in several places throughout that debate last yes. night. Wish we could talk about it more, but guys, thanks so much. Thank, Thank you very it. much. I have much better judgment than she does. There's no question about that. I also have a much better temperament than she has. I think Donald just criticized me for preparing for this debate. And yes, I did. 
And you know what else I prepared for? I prepared to be president, and I think that's a good thing. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump clashing on ISIS, race relations, even Trump's fitness for the job. More than 80 million people watched, making it the most watched presidential debate of all time, meeting a lot of expectation. Joining me, our political analyst, LaDawn Jones and Mike Hassinger. Got to start with asking you, how are you feeling today? You know, uh, as a Democrat, I'm really excited. I think Hillary did extremely well in the debate last night. She looked very presidential. She hit a few zingers and left a few more people, I think, on her list. All right, so in your opinion, she won. Mike? Well, I think uh, if you're grading it on a traditional scale, if you're evaluating this as you've evaluated presidential debates uh, in the past, yes, absolutely, Hillary Clinton won. But Donald Trump is a non-traditional candidate. He's played the game differently all along. He has played along. the game differently since he got into this race. Nobody had any expectations of him. I think the big question was, who, which Donald Trump was going to show up, the calm one or the upsettable, excitable one? Well, I think both did. Absolutely. <laughs> At the beginning, he seemed to be on script. He was, you know, he was very, I guess, solid and looked presidential, if you will. But then, it, you know, he sort of fell off the rails, it looked like. Everything that Hillary Clinton dangled in front of him, every bait that she put out there, he bit on. He, he got, he got uh, uh, rattled early on, about 30, 40 minutes in. And everything that she said to get under his skin right. worked. Was that was that the strategy? Do you think? I about? think so. I think that's in preparing for for one of the Trumps. It was surprising that he was so upset over the ads. He circled back to things that she didn't even bring up and started to address those as well. And so that's when you really knew that he was frazzled. And from that that to the end of the debate, it was a different Trump. Yeah. Well, look, Trump interrupted Hillary Clinton some 29 times. I think it was counted. And so, you know, what? How do you think that that was read by viewers? Where is there gender politics, or at least it, did it was it viewed by uh, those watching as think, gender politics? I think anyone in the audience demeaning, condescending is going to try to look for any advantage to their candidate. So if you're a Democrat, yes, that's absolutely going to be gender politics. If uh, uh, you're a Republican, you're going to say no, absolutely not. The reality is, you know, this is a woman who was first lady, who has been a senator, who has been secretary of state, and who has touted herself as experienced and capable and competent and ready from day one to take this job on. I don't think you get to say all that and then say, but I'm a woman, take it easy on me. You just can't. Yeah, I know, but I mean, did he come across, He did he look like he was trying to come across as the alpha male who was, you know, the, 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 the super uh, presence on the stage and, you know, making her look diminutive uh, in, in a figurative sense? Well, I think that's what people want out of Trump, right? His supporters, that's what they like about him, right? That he uh, is not trying to be bodacious, but at the same time being bodacious, right? right? Um, they want him to be outgoing. I saw a comment that said he was such a gentleman for not saying something things he could have said with her daughter in the room, <laughs> yeah. right? Right, right? From his supporters. Very quickly. Thumbs up, thumbs down on Lester Holt. Thumbs up. I thought Lester was perfect. He didn't have to fact check anybody. He did what reporters should do. He let the candidates be themselves, and he did follow up questions. I thought he was excellent. Yeah. I definitely think a thumbs up. I was looking for him to be a little bit more vocal, but overall his performance was great. All right. Guys, always good to talk to you. Thanks, Brenda. Thanks so much.